We're on air, and that is Linda Kenny, the chairperson of Leinster Camogie. So she's gone through the teams at the start of the game, or before the start of the game here. The players only coming onto the pitch now from one of the teams. Dixborough in their maroon and white are on the field, and there is a huge crowd here, as you can see in Abbottstown, the National Sports Centre, and then this GEA part of that centre. It's absolutely splendid. Look at that pitch. I was out on it there. It is perfect. Yes, there's a little bit of wind. Yes, there's been a little bit of drizzle the last hour or so, but that shouldn't do any harm at all. This is perfect for any type of Gaelic games, but especially perfect, I would imagine, for Camogie. So no excuses, no bumps at all. The ball should be perfect. And uh, if you like your ground hurling today, could be the day to do that. And I keep being reminded to myself, if you like, of the famous Ursula Jacob goal in the All-Ireland final for Wexford on a similar pitch to this. They pride themselves on being compared to Crow Park the groundsmen here and this is the sort of pitch where we might see a bit of magic again so I've taken the step of putting the GoPro camera up in one of the goals and hope that she pings one into the top corner today and rolls back the years and that is very much the theme today rolling back the years certainly for Euler Dybala 2012 and 2015 All-Ireland winners and again in December and a lot of those girls still around out in the middle of the pitch the captains are there with Gavin Donegan a Dublin man refereeing the game and in the maroon jersey and maroon helmet that is Aoife Prendergast the captain of Dixborough and it looks like the toss has actually been won by the Eilert captain who is also their number eight that's Stacey Q. and it doesn't really matter I think today there's no real advantage in the conditions the pitch is perfect conditions are pretty much perfect for this time of year as well we're looking forward to a terrific game so let's go through the teams, starting with Eilert. Lauren Sinnott in goals. Aideen Brennan, a veteran of those All-Irelands I was talking about. So is Kira Storey. So is Mary Lacey. So is Shelley and Stacey, the twins. So is Una Lacey and, of course, Ursula Jacob. But lots of young players interlaced there throughout the Eilert team. Lots of experience, lots of youth as well. And they are gunning for another All-Ireland. That is an impressive looking team there. Let's go on and look at the Dixborough team. We've heard no changes so far. There could, of course, be, but we'll know when the ball's thrown in. But the Dixborough team there, Kirsty Maher, in goals and then you have the feelings of course the sisters Neve feeling at six Kira feeling at nine and there's another sister is Emer feeling in the subs at number 25 and the captain of course at number eight and three other sisters the Cliffords five is Tara Jenny at 15 she was a soaring star in 2016 and Amy Clifford at 13 the Kilkenny minor captain for this year so three Clifford sisters on the starting 15 very much a family affair today for this 2022 or rather 2021 in 2022 AIB Leinster Senior Championship Final here in Abbottstown so the scene is set we are on YouTube and we welcome your comments there in the live chat and I will endeavor to read them out where I can we already have a few in so thank you for that Richard English says good luck I alert the ballot let's do the double up Wexford and Sandra O'Shaughnessy says good luck to I alert the ballot let's balance that up and have a message or two from Kilkenny please it's Wexford against Kilkenny here today really it is I alert against Dixborough in the game here today in Abbottstown so the Eilert players are taking their black tops off and getting ready for the start of the game, the famous red and black. Two villages down there in Wexford, Eilert and Bala, so they call it Eilert the Bala. Nine members of the 2012 team going for a fourth All-Ireland. So a lot of talk around that today, and rightly so too, because the girls went all the way to an All-Ireland in December and did it again. And what a day it was for the captain, number eight, Stacey Q. The previous day she got married. And then she was player of the match on the Saturday after getting married on the Friday. So what a two days it was for the Army Private and her sister, of course, the twin Shelley at number 11, scored 1-3 in the final. What a day it was for their family. And she, by the way, is engaged to the manager, Colin Sutherland. Sunderland, rather. Sunderland, of course. Sunderland. And they have Kevin Kennedy, Kevin Doyle, and Rory Jacob in there as coach as well. As for Dixborough, their manager is Donald Carroll with Ted Carroll, their brothers, 
and there's Emer Tynan and Catherine Peters who helps out with the training and Dan O'Neill also with the training and they are expert trainers and they have a management team in place there and of course in the subs they've got lots of interesting players as well we will go through them if they come on but I can point out Rachel Dowling is the baby of their squad she's the daughter of the Thurless Sarsfields manager Mark Dowling so not long to the start of the game now I was going to play in a little bit of the 2012 All-Ireland final when Eulert won their very first senior title maybe do that at half time and at half time I'll also have a video from the game yesterday that we covered on a live stream for Leinster Camogie and that was Nakanana so we'll have a video from there as well so watch out for that at half time but don't really want to go away from here at the moment because the atmosphere is building there's a tension in the air and the players and the crowd are now standing for the anthem One little fella walking along there with his flag along the front of the crowd, supporting Dixborough, of course, and also support for Dixborough on YouTube. Feel free to leave me a message on the live chat. I did ask for one for Dixborough, and it's come in from, is it Roe Brennan or Brennan Rowe? Good luck, Dixborough. So thank you for that. And also, there's another one, good luck, Dixborough, saying bring it home. Feel free to leave me messages there and interact with me as the day goes on, because... We want to know what you're thinking as well about the game as it unfolds. You are very much part of this. We welcome you to the coverage. We hope you enjoy it. We're hoping for a really cracking game here today. It's certainly got all the ingredients. A hush in the crowd, as there usually is at this time. And it's sort of that uh, moment where you realise there's that little bit of expectancy there and they're waiting for something special to happen. Not getting too excited just yet. I have spotted one change. Number 28 is in for Eulert, and that is Leanne Nolan. So she is definitely in. I don't know who's gone, who's been replaced, but let's just get on with the play. Let's get to the game, and it's Eulert right from the start with Katie Gallagher. The number 10 there seemed to get the ball to go off on a run, but she's lost it, and the ball spilled there again. A little bit scrappy, but well taken by Katie Byrne, the number four, and she sends it up the pitch a little bit. But that is... Curran getting it deep into enemy territory and getting it up to Ursula Jacob and Ursula there and she's leaving it off but actually is blown for over carrying she was trying to protect the ball there and waiting for a bit of support but the referee Gavin Donegan says you took too long goalkeeper is Kirsty Marr Kilkenny club goalkeeper of the year for 2021 Dispatches it down the left hand side and that is Mary Lacey chasing it there at number seven. But it's gonna come straight back from Katie Byrne. Now Dixborough looking to get their first attack underway in this game. Nice little bit of juggling on the stick, and that's a good sensible bubble into the forwards as well from Ava O'Gorman. This is Asha McCarty, number 10, one of their very young players involved there. This is a little bit messy, but Lucinda Gahan is in there trying. And there may still be a chance here. It's Jenny Clifford trying to burst through. And now this is O'Gorman again and trying to get a little bit of room, but there's red shirts everywhere. Good compact defending, and she shortens the stick a little bit to clear on what a innovative little touch there that was from Shelley Kyo to just tap it over her head but didn't quite come off so it's going to come straight back a little bit of room again here for McCarty 
And she leaves it off, and that is Gahan now, and is this the first score? Yes, it sure is, straight over the spot, and the crowd liked that one, they were right behind it. First blood goes to the girls from Kilkenny. Lauren Sinnott, a cousin of Siobhan at 12, and Neve in the subs. Lots of Sinnots on the team. That one breaks kindly, and could be a chance for Eilert here. Little bit of support and Louise Sinnott, not related to the goalkeeper. And that one's going to go over the side and it will be an Eilert ball. As I say, 28 is in. Not sure who is not there. 11 is there. And 13 is there. So we'll do it by a process of elim elimination and we'll try and figure that out for you. Or maybe you can tell me on YouTube, Kitty Gallagher, 10 is in there. 15 is in there, that's Louise. And Una Lacey, of course, is in there at 14. Battles at close quarters right in front of the crowd. They love it when they see all that up close. It was great play by Curran for Bala. Louise Sinnott was Watching that all the way, waiting for it to come out, and it did come out. This is Gallagher with a shot from distance. It's not going to carry, or is it? Oh, and it's batted just over the bar by the goalkeeper. Could have ended up in the net, but Eilert will take the point. Thank you very much. One all. Huge, enthusiastic crowd here today for the Leinster Senior Final. The AIB Championship, the toughest, is the hashtag. And this is about being tough on a day like this at the end of January, but it's also about being skillful, and there's an awful lot of great Komogi players out there. Eilert winning that exchange over on the far side and Kira Story gets it. Was about to launch it but is told to go back for a free. Five, six, seven and eight are out there as well for Eilert. So I'm still trying to figure out who's actually not out there. I wonder if it's one of the other defensive players or certainly eight and nine are out there. But the important thing you need to know is that Leanne Nolan is in from the start wearing 28. Ursula Jacob races into the right corner off the tack. The attack gets it back to Shelley Q. She's getting advantage here and she takes that advantage and this is dangerous and the goalkeeper has dropped that and it has gone over the line and surely that is a goal at the start of the game and the referee is actually bringing it back though for a free and some of the crowd, obviously the Eilert crowd, not happy with that but Let's see the replay here and see what happened. I think he'd already blown for the free and the goalkeeper will be mighty relieved because she dropped that into the net. That is a serious let off for Dexborough in the opening minutes of the game, but the ref had blown the whistle. Eilert still could get a score from it because Ursula Jacob is over it. Four All-Stars, four All-Irelands. Still going in 2022. But wide on this occasion, so they don't profit. Could have so easily been a goal, but they get nothing out of it at the end, Eilert. And this girl, Lauren Sinnott, gets off the hook, if I'm being honest. Now, that's well taken for Dixborough but not well played in the end by Neve Phelan so it's going to come straight back and Shelley Kyo does really well there a little innovative piece of play there and there's now a chance and Ursula Jacob shoots low oh what a fantastic save by Kirsty Maher getting down to her right an explosive start to this game could have been a goal but brilliantly saved and Ursula Jacob you'd have put your house on her you'd have thought she'd have scored that one she went low, but it was saved. We'll have a look at it again, I think, in a minute if we can. But things are heating up all over the pitch. Dixborough trying to get on the attack, but it's going to come straight back at them. It's been turned over, and that's good play by 
Curran out into the midfield and Gallagher is there and she speeds away Gallagher and the referee is going to give her advantage. It's going to come back. But what about that chance for Ursula Jacob? The crowd sensed that there was going to be a goal and they, you could hear them lifting and here she goes on her right. You would have put money on that. Brilliant, brilliant save. I wonder how important will that be from the Kilkenny Club Goalkeeper of the Year 2021 and that's why she got that award. Rosanna Doyle on our YouTube live chat says, what a save, wasn't it? Unbelievable. And Kiva Boyle says, well, best of luck to Kevin Doyle and the Eilert girls today, watching eagerly all the way from Perth in Australia. Great to have you with us. Thank you for that message. If everyone else wants to let us know where they're watching from, that'd be great. Lacey shoots, and it looked like a certain goal again. And the goalkeeper saves it, to be honest. I think it more hit her. But she'll say she was in the right place at the right time, and you can't argue with that. But the main thing is that they have not conceded a goal. Eilert denied for the second time, but they are threatening to run riot here. It's one point each early in the game, but Eilert could easily have had two and even three if you consider the one that wasn't allowed. But here comes Curran steaming through. They haven't had a goal yet. They go for it again, but the goalkeeper doesn't have to make a save because the referee says over carrying. He's called for a little bit of treatment now for the goalkeeper. Here it is again, Lacey, the drive, three or four maroon jerseys went in for it, they couldn't get to her, but the goalkeeper got in the way and made herself big, and that's the important thing, and Dixborough are hanging on, but what a dramatic start, and what heroics from the goalkeeper. They are getting through, Eilert, though, and that's got to be a worry for Dixborough, getting through the middle as well, but... You really would have thought players like Una Lacey and Ursula Jacob would be lifting the net, but not so. Una, of course, scored three goals against Sarsfields in the All-Ireland final in December, but was denied on that occasion. So it's the experience of Eilert up against this young Dixborough team. Interesting game, Dixborough. On the rack, it has to be said, but they'll maybe appreciate this little break. <laughs> and by the way, talking about breaks, there will be a water break here today because Camogie has not been in line with the rest of the, well, the men's GAA, if you like, because their decision was made last Wednesday. Camogie have a decision that the water breaks will be ended on Tuesday. So we will have water breaks here today, and the players certainly from Dixborough might appreciate that, or their managers might appreciate it. Some coming through briefly. So lovely conditions, perfect pitch for Camogie. And we have a game that is living up to the billing. And now it's Dixborough after getting off the hook. Kira Phelan. This is Amy Clifford now. But most of their attacks have been repelled, apart from one really nice score. And it's Eilert's with the more clever shall we say work around the back there and they seem to manage to engineer to get it away and then they're very sharp in the forwards it has to be said but not on this occasion the Dixborough defenders were too sharp for them good play coming out as well by Tara Clifford but she's been blown for over carrying we've had a lot of that in the game so far so do you stick or do you twist do you let the ball go or do you carry it that is the decision for the players out there and the temptation is to run with it but maybe the management will be saying let it go this is Kira's story and she looks for Jacob and surely the stick everybody saw that the crowd saw it and the referee closest to it saw it as well and that's a free in and surely that will be Allard's second score of the game and Jacob comes over to take it you all know the name from RTE of course but well before that she made her name on her own with brilliant goals and brilliant play and all Ireland's three in a row for Wexford. And even before that, she was famous because her dad, Mick, was the first Wexford hurling all-star in 1972. And in the same year, her mum, Breda, played in an All-Ireland junior final. So good breeding. Her body language there suggested she might actually go low, but she just fired it over the bar. Two points to one. 
for Eilert. Maybe she was itching to make up for that goal miss. Maher, the goalkeeper, remains unbeaten in there. Good anticipation by Kira Story. Kira was 32 earlier this month. And this is Curran putting it in there. And the goalkeeper having to watch it again. She's had a lot of ball to deal with just under her crossbar. And she's dealt with it very well, apart from the one she got away with. But it is one-way traffic. The Reds are all over the Maroons, it has to be said, in an attacking sense. Decision for Dixborough. I hope you're enjoying the coverage. Thanks to Leinster Komogi for making it available free. Free to watch. And it's a brilliant service. We had the game yesterday for you as well in the Junior B. Nakanana beating St. Bridget's. And this game again today, the senior final. And what a game it is. And it's brilliant to showcase the skills and the play in these games. And the girls, they certainly deserve it. And their communities appreciate it. And it brings it to people outside those communities as well. And why not? Eilert are the All-Ireland champions. That ball driven in. And the referee is going to bring it back because he spotted something there. He certainly is not happy at all. And he is going to have a word, I think, with um, one of the one or two of the Dixborough players. Well, one player from each side, actually. And it's number two is Kate Dempsey. And number 28 is Leanne Nolan. And it's one of those ones he's saying, look, I'm not going to do anything now, but behave yourselves. I saw what you were doing. No more of that. And he's going to drop it in. Huge crowd online as well, I have to say. Over 500 people watching. And the referee also making his feelings clear to one of the management for Eilert. And they get the decision this time. And as you can tell, it's right down in front of the Eilert support. So they really enjoyed that one. Ursula Jacob coming over to take it. She'll take her time, fair distance out, outside the 45. Her camera right behind it, and she decides to go short, and why not, because there was a little move at the last minute there from Stacey Kyo, the captain. Oh, that was crafty, and it worked. Three points to one for Eilert, but could easily be three goals. Never mind three points. There was a flick on that from a girl wearing maroon, which means that Dixborough could get an attack going here. Kira Phelan is there, but look at that tackling from Stacey Kyo to get in there. That was absolutely brilliant. No time at all to rest on the ball. And they are in like terriers every time. And that has been the pattern at the start of this game in the first quarter. Really good connection, and it's gone all the way over the top. And Nolan is there, and Jacob is there, and the challenge comes in and flattens her, and the referee says, play on. It's getting hot and heavy out there. Some brilliant skills. The sideline ball was absolutely amazing. The puck was going over everybody's heads. Really competitive game here, and everybody enjoying the intensity. And the challenges are all really keenly contested. And Dixborough are giving as good as they get at the moment. They're not getting all of the decisions, though, in the end. And that was brilliantly pulled on. And that has been the pattern so far. And Jacob is 
saying thanks very much. I'll get on to that one. Gets the ball in hand and looks to get it over, but it's only going to go to the goalkeeper. And Maher does well, but it's gone actually straight to Louise Sinnott. And now the captain, Kyo. She's been really lively and has always made room for herself and put it into the danger area, but it's easily cleared. And Amy Clifford is after that one, but Mary Lacey's going to get there first using all of her experience to read that one and then burst clear. And she slips, but releases it. Fascinating exchanges all over the field. And look at this for a burst from the captain. She's away again, Kyo. She's been superb. She scored one from play, and there's two from play. The crowd love it. That's why she was player of the match in the All-Ireland Final in December, a day after she got married. And here she is again at the end of January, driving her team forward into a 4-1 lead. But as we hit the water break, I wonder, just wonder if their management are wondering how they are only three points ahead because they had Dixborough on the rack, it has to be said. And they didn't put away the goal chances that were coming their way, really surprisingly. I wonder what you're thinking. Send me your messages on the YouTube live chat. Put them up there and I'll try and read them out. It would be interesting to see what you made of those early exchanges. Dixborough struggling, but they should be delighted to be only three down. Rory Conlon on the live chat says, come on, Dixborough. They do need a little bit of support and encouragement to get back into this because they are being overrun a lot of the time, I think it's fair to say. They have some super young players out there and they need to stay in the game. They need to just, as a team, stay in the game. Some of the young girls, by the way, played for Loretto Kilkenny on Thursday there and won the Leinster Senior Schools title. Asha McCarty at number 10, for example, and she's out there today, so big experience for her today, a big step up to play in this game. Also in that team, girls in the subs, Rachel Dowling, Rachel Egan and Kiva Carroll, or maybe she goes by Kiva Carroll. But they need to settle Dixborough, and they need to get into this game and get it up the field a little bit because they're losing most of the exchanges around the middle. They are getting stuck in, but they're not just, not just getting the final ball away. That's why it's all going from right to left. Now, though, the goalkeeper, Kirsty Maher, will go from left to right as you're watching it. And again, it is Curran for Eilert, who wins it. Now, three Dixborough girls in there, but can they get the actual ball out of there and in their possession? So close. They might get it in the end. No, it goes down the line, and it's out at her. Just been that little bit cuter. Lovely little pick up there as well by Nolan. Now, she has been crowded there, and she's blowing for over-carrying, and the Eilert management and supporters very unhappy with that. Neve Phelan, the 2021 joint Kilkenny minor captain. So another of the very young players. Lots of ability, but they just need to settle into this game. And that's her sister, or rather Kira Phelan. Yeah, Kira Phelan going for that one. But it's coming all the way back at them again because Kyo is inspired today. This is Sinnott looking for Shelley. And Shelley... Might get there in the end. It was Katie Gallagher waiting for it, number 10, and she leaves it off. And they are very frustrated, as you can see, because they thought they were through there for a point or a goal, but the referee had blown his whistle for a free, and that happened earlier, of course, for what could have been a goal given to Eilert. He'd already blown. Should get a point out of it and go 5-1 up though. No problem. 
John Adams on live chat. Thank you for the message. He says, very happy with the first 17 minutes from an Eilert point of view. Happy with the opening half. Dixburg are keeping them in it. And he's from Wexford. Yeah. Interesting one. Maybe Dixburg are happier. Oh, what a brilliant hook there from Maria O'Dowd, the number two for Eilert. Textbook defending. Just when Dixburg think they're getting away, that little bit of craftiness, that little bit of sharpness and cuteness is there from Eilert. And again, the challenge going in there to prevent a score as well and making sure the ball drops kindly. And Kirsty, or rather Aideen, no, Lauren, Lauren Sinnott, the goalkeeper, has it. Eilert just have all the answers at the minute. And yet, they're only four clear. And that can change very, very quickly. Prendergast, the captain, getting involved now. And Clifford playing out around the middle a lot involved now, but doesn't get the ball. Actually, she does get it now at the second time of asking. But look who's there. It's Curran again. The midfield for Euler today has been so lively all over the field. So hard working. And they come out again, the winners from the exchange. They go long, and there's quite a battle in there because Jacob and Jane Cass, the number seven from Dixborough, are going at it in there. And Tara Clifford now, and they will clear through Kira O'Shea. But I fancy it's going to come straight back, and it does because there's a little bit of room here, you know. And it's Louise in it. She will go off with it. Now, she might get hooked here if she's not careful. So she'll give it to Jacob, who's got a, a good hand there. And they do get advantage this time. And they go for their shot. It's going wide. And they're frustrated again. But they will get a free. Management in front of me very unhappy as well. They feel that they are being stopped out there illegally quite a lot. And they want something a little bit more than just the odd free. John Adams on live chat also says the Dixborough keeper is keeping them in it. And Rory Conlon says, come on, Dixborough, but looks like they aren't quite as good today. Well, I think that's a fair comment so far, but the longer they stay in it, you expect that they will have a little period of dominance of their own. And they're only, as I say, four points down, which is, you know, is nothing in Camogie. But Eilert, what a performance this last while from them. You might have been forgiven for thinking that the Ireland All-Ireland winning team of 2012 and 2015 had basically gone. But no, nope, they have come back with a bang. Maybe they were never away. Of course, they halted Slough Neal's run on the march to four All-Ireland titles. And they took the title themselves by beating Sarsfields in December. And they're on their way again. Nine members of the 2012 team going for a fourth All-Ireland, which is quite incredible. So you have Aideen Brennan in there, you have Kira Story. They also won All-Irelands with Wexford in 2010 and 2011. She's the daughter of Martin Story, who was a Wexford captain when they won the All-Ireland in 1996. Mary Lacey, of course, she's the older sister of Una. Won the three in a row with Wexford. Started playing with Wexford, would you believe, in 2001. Now 34 or 35, Wikipedia isn't sure. Won All-Stars in 2004 and 2007. Still playing some 20 years later for a club. And Una, of course, epitomizes the hashtag, the toughest from the AIB. Five-point lead now for Eilert. So they are... Tapping over the freeze and stretching their leads. And Dixborough now have just got that one point. It was a good point from play, but it seems like an awful long time ago. They need something else now. That's broken by their number 11, Lucinda Gahan. But it's coming back right away. Yet again, it's Gallagher on the run. They're not stopping her. And she, I think, was going for a score. But it's going to fall tamely wide. And I'm sure the goalkeeper, Maher, is wondering, where do we put this where we might win a ball? It's the second ball that Eulard keep winning. Or the third or the fourth, but 
they win the important one when it breaks. They go up again, but number four, actually, Katie Byrne is there. And it comes back towards Una Lacey with all the bandages. And that breaks to Curran. She gets it back and puts it on a plate for Lacey, who comes inside. But she gives a wayward pass. That looked like a foul there, but the referee says play on. And now it's into the danger area and goes tamely wide. And the referee says there may be treatment required here. So he just stops the watch for a minute. And it's almost like a water break, but there's going to be a hold up here now for a minute or two. Now she's trying to carry on, but she's definitely struggling. And they're telling her to take her time. So a fascinating early part to this game. Six points to one for Eilert in the 26th minute. Not good enough from Dixborough, but they have ability and they might still get into this. This is Nolan. Oh, absolutely fantastic inspirational play again from the captain. She's had an amazing first half and she leaves it off to her twin sister. And now it is Ursula Jacob in there and a bang on the back and that's a clear free and it might be a penalty and it all came from the work by the twin threat of the Qs and yes indeed the referee signals and this could be a crucial point in the game. Nasty little bang in the back there and she's certainly feeling that one. I wonder would she be able to get up and take the penalty or will somebody else come forward and take it? I was saying that Dixborough need to stay in the game, but you're thinking at this point that this goes in, they're going to be a long way behind. And it's not as if there's a strong wind, so it's not like it's going one way or the other. The referee there, the goalkeeper preparing herself. But Jacob is still down. There's a hush in the crowd, they're waiting. And it looks like Una Lacey is going to take it. She's over it anyway. And talking of injuries, Una has had so many knee problems down the years and quite possibly shouldn't be playing anymore, but she looks after herself and does what she needs to do out there. A catalogue of knee injuries down the years. And she really, as I said earlier, epitomizes the hashtag the toughest. Scored three goals in the All-Ireland final in December. Is she going to get another one now? Ursula is okay. Una Lacey now. Hashtag the toughest. Almost belongs only to her. And she also is a great goal scorer. Is she going to get another one? She buries it. Top of the net. Or at least to the left-hand side of the goalkeeper where she couldn't get at it. 1-6 to a point. And Lacey laces it into the net for Eilert, they're on their way yet again. You see it again, smash, brilliant goal. Now, Dixborough really have work to do. They were hanging on, but now they need something and they need to get back into this game. So Tara Clifford is involved. Asha McCarty is involved. They're all now realizing that they really have to lift at a level but they just can't get past the Qs. They are incredible today. And off goes Sinnott. The twin threat from the Qs is just remarkable today. And there is the other one, that's Shelley. Nolan and Jacob applying pressure, but Lee Phelan is there. Laboring to get it away, but they do in the end with Kate Dempsey. Now, the exchange is won again by Eilert, and it's Mary Lacey. But in the end, Prendergast, the captain, sends it into the Eilert danger area, but there was an Eilert player spare to, to get it and clear it. And look where they have space up the middle as well. They're so sharp on the ball and so efficient. And then that direct ball in there, and Jacob's waiting to pounce using her experience to get on it. There may have been a pull there, but she plays on. Referee says that's okay. She's still turning and twisting, loses the stick, but gets it to Nolan, 
and Nolan is through on goal and that could be another penalty. She looks like she was brought down and the referee certainly had his whistle to his mouth and now has blown. And that looked like in the square to me. I wonder what he's going to give for this one. He doesn't seem to be making it clear just yet. But this could be big trouble again for Dixborough. Another brilliant attack from Eilard and it was all the way from their own goal area. Direct play right up the middle of the field. And Dixborough holding on for dear life. And you know what? I think the referee is not giving anything for Eilard here. He's maybe saying that was just a slip. We're in the 31st minute, so we're in added time at the end of the first half. 1-6 plays a point. Dixborough from Kilkenny with only one score. Tara Clifford, that is the number five from Dixborough going for that. She gets a little bit of support in there. And Dixborough for once actually get the ball and win it from one of those exchanges. And it was well done by Lucinda Gahan. And now their forwards who have been starved of play get a chance to see what they can do. But a wayward swipe there means a free out. Eilert just better all over the pitch it has to be said Kira story oh my goodness the height the distance the directness on that one it could go anywhere and they are piling on the pressure on Dixborough and Shelley Q is there and they're winning balls that they shouldn't really be winning at the second time of asking usually but Dixborough now giving as good as they get drops into the captain Q so it'll come straight back. Their pressure is relentless. Referee blows for half time, I think. No, he's not. He's blown for the ball to be played out. I thought it was half time the way he was looking towards the side. But no, we're not finished yet. We're in the third minute of added time. But we had a few injuries, of course, and a few stoppages. So we play on. Oh, and that was Kitty Byrne trying to get that, but spilled it. May still be a chance for Dixborough to get up the field. And they'd love to get up the field. Never mind get a score. They just can't get up the field. And then they do it, come straight back again. That's gone over the end. Our sideline there over by the scoreboard. Nearly in the 34th minute now of the first half. Now, what can Dixborough do right at the end of the first half? Eilert defence standing firm and Mary Lacey getting it away. Lovely quick play again. They all seem to know where each other are exactly on the field. And they get that decision as well. Actually, it's Dixborough who are getting the decision in the end. But their body language is of a team that has been under pressure an entire half and they can't wait for this half to end. Now, this is Kira Phelan. What can she do? Jenny Clifford. Now they get it in. Somewhere near the goal area. Can this break for Dixborough? No. Brilliant defending again. And Aideen Brennan clears it. Just that little bit of experience all over the field. They know exactly where it to be. And there is the direct ball again. And why not put it direct when you have Jacob in there. And you have Una Lacey and Una waiting to pounce. Is she going to get another goal? She'll usually put it in any way she can. But the goalkeeper in the end survives. And it is a little bit amazing when you consider the goal action up there that Dixborough have only conceded one goal. 
and that from a penalty. Could have been five. But Dixborough still in there, still alive. Right at the end of the first half, nearly in the 36th minute of the first half. And look how hard they have to battle for possession. In the end, they don't get it because Katie Roach was there. And she drives it up the middle. And Stacey Kyo is there, the captain. She has been so impressive in this first half. And she ends the first half the way that she's been playing throughout it. Another brilliant score from the midfielder. Brings it to 1-7 to a point. And there's the incident from earlier on. You fancy that this should be the end of the play in the first half. But no, referee says there's still time. And this one breaks kindly for Jenny Clifford. And she's got attention now, but she for once has a little bit of time. And she plays it in low this time. And looking for Amy Clifford, her sister. And there's a ball that looks dangerous. Goalkeeper comes out to meet it. And this could be a lucky break for Dixborough. If they can get a goal right at the end of the half. But no, the door looks like it's been closed. And it sure has been closed. And it's Eilert who come out with it. Just for a second there, it looked like there was a chance. But the referee ends the play in the 37th minute in the first half as the sun comes out here in Abbottstown and just for a moment there was a chink of light there for Dixborough but only for a moment and it's been a frustrating half for the girls from Kilkenny and for their management they are going to go in at half time and they are going to have to come up with a different plan because plan A in the first half did not work now I'm going to play a couple of videos at half time so don't be going away. These are really good. The first one is from 2012 when Eilert won their first ever senior All-Ireland in Crow Park. And I was there to see it. Una Lacey, you really went through the pain barrier today, but I'm sure it was worth it. Oh, it surely was. I could have went off in the first half, but I was... So happy to keep going for the second half and sure the girls were outstanding the whole match. Like you couldn't ask for more commitment and hard working girls to be captain of so just very happy. You were so determined to stay on as long as you could and there were a few tears. Yeah. <laughs> They're joyful tears, but and then it was heartbreaking having to come off, but at least we have I have the cup in my hand here so I can't complain too much. And what does that mean to you considering your mum lifted the All Ireland many years ago and your sister was on the team and it's for your club? Oh sure, it's just an unbelievable like it's, I actually still can't believe it. Like we've been kind of dreaming of this for so many years and like we've lost so much together and now winning today is just oh I'm lost for words for it really. Margaret Lacey, proud mum today. I'd have to be. I'd have to be really. I have been involved with these girls, you know, from the time they were very young. Every one of them that are on the panel have been with them from underage right up along, seeing them win uh, under 10, under 12 and 14 titles. And then we, we won five Fela titles. And then, you know, for it to take so long like for to, to reach here, this is a, a very special day for us. I know you think that the whole team is your family. They're all your daughters, really. But can we talk about Una? She went through the pain today to lift that cup. Oh, yeah, Una is... is um, she has serious knee problems and uh, you know earlier in the year she you know she's been suffering with quad problems and this particular knee that's giving her trouble and uh, you know she really went through the pain today you know and she's been training so hard you know it's a little bit of a disappointment that you know she couldn't uh, you know go on it the way she'd like to go on it but at the same time it's brilliant for the team and that she's you know have had the honour of captain in the team you know How does this compare to winning all Ireland with Wexford? Um, I don't think I've ever cried after winning All Ireland, but um, I suppose it's, it's also more special. Like it's not your home, you know, your home team. You're going to when you retire with Wexford, you're going to be going back and playing with Oulder. Like so, I suppose that extra bit special. And sure, we're just all so close. There's not, there's not one girl you wouldn't be close behind the panel. So I think it just makes it that much extra special. So us, oh, brilliant. Nine members of that 2012 team still here and going for a fourth All-Ireland now. There's the subs out on the pitch from Eilert and you see the sun is well and truly out now. So the pitch cut in two between the dark and the light here. 
And I'm going to play another video now. And this one is from a lot more recently. It's from yesterday. And it's for the goalkeeper for Nakanana yesterday. 50 years old, almost 51, but not quite. Loretta Mutton. She won a Leinster Championship yesterday with her club. And I spoke to her after the game. Now you brought up ages, you did say all ages, I was talking to you before the game and you were warming up and the regular keeper seven months pregnant said that's where you had to play. Uh huh, I played junior last year um, and so poor Kelly couldn't play this year um, despite her wanting to, um, so yes had to step into place, um, I'll play Camogie no matter where I have to play so um, no I'm just delighted to be able to be in with the team and uh, as you say age is, age is only a number as we know. <laughs> so at the age of 51, I'm sorry if you don't mind me saying almost that 51. almost 51, sorry, 50 then, we'll hold yeah, on to that. that but age isn't a barrier? No, not at all, I think as long as you're you know if I wasn't capable of being on here I wouldn't be here, whether I was, we had a goalie or not, you know, there's lots of other girls on the bench so I've had the experience down the years, so didn't always play in the goals Full back was my position, um, but um, no, age, is, age means nothing really. And is it a desire to play Camogie or a desire to win or a desire to play with this particular team? What is it for you? Oh, just pure desire to play Camogie. I, yeah, I've played since I was about nine, I think. So um, I've played no matter where I've lived or been, I've played Camogie and it just, it's my passion. I, um, I'm heavily involved in the club and running the club and just, so it's just, you know, it's, I have three girls who play. Um, hopefully I'll hang on till my 12-year-old um, moves up and uh, I might be able to still be playing. <laughs> but it's just wonderful. Brilliant achievement there for Loretta Mutton, 50 years old, been playing Camogie for over 40 years. Now, the girls here from Eilard haven't quite been playing that long now, to be fair. It might seem like it to some of their opponents, but they are right at the top of their game today. 170 a point here in Abbottstown. Rafael Nadal has won the tennis in Australia, a record-breaking 21st Grand Slam title. And with him still winning, and with Eilert de Barra still winning, it feels like we're stuck in 2011 or somewhere around there when Wexford and Eilert were at their peak. Can't beat class and experience, and they are still going in 2022. And Eilert going extremely well here. Now, the teams are in the dressing rooms at the moment, so no sign of them, but we're going to take a break for just a couple of minutes now, and it probably only will be a couple of minutes, so don't go too far away, but we're just going to take that break now and rejoin you for the start of the second half.
Welcome back for the start of the second half. Dixborough are out on the field. Eilert are not. So we're waiting them, waiting on them. And here they come, out the tunnel, just down below us, led by their captain, Stacey Kyo, and their supporters around us here in the stand. Don't see any changes at halftime. Did see one of the subs there, Karen Atkinson, wearing 16. She captained Wexford to an All-Ireland and she is in there if required. There's also Shauna Sinnott. She was 17 in 2012 when they won that first All-Ireland that we showed at halftime. So they have plenty of resources there and young players willing to come in. But I don't see any changes just as yet. But there may be. I'll keep an eye on that. The sun is out for the second half. What sort of team is there from Dixborough? That's the question. Can they lift their game? Katie Byrne gets on it right away and sends it over to the right but too far to the right it's gone over the end line I wonder what this first 10 minutes of the second half will be like Eilert playing into the end where the sun is so the sun will be in their eyes if they're going forward which might be a little bit trickier and there's a bit of wind as well which looks to be going across the pitch swirling maybe all right, Dixborough, only one score to their name in 37 minutes in that first half. And to be honest, they didn't look like scoring much more. I can't even remember another chance that they had, really. So I would imagine they've had a serious talking to at halftime. It's show up or go home, I would imagine. That's better from them, though. And it was Phelan involved there. They need to win exchanges all over the fields, but they're... Not doing that, as you can see, because it looks like it might be cleared. But in the end, it's Jenny Clifford, actually, who's done well and won a free. Thought it was going to come back out again, but she won it back, and she has got a free. And it looks like an excellent chance for them to get their second point of the game. And they really need a good start to this second half. So this is their opportunity. I guess the managers would say, win your individual battles and we'll take it from there because it seems like every individual battle was lost in the first half. Referee could be showing a yellow card here. He's certainly taking the details of Aideen Brennan and indeed shows the yellow. On Facebook, or rather YouTube live chat, Kerry Wickham says, great performance from Eilert so far keep up the work great girls and the scores will keep coming so feel free to leave us your messages there on the youtube live chat oh that's low actually that could go anywhere and it could end the net it's gone in the net goal right at the start of the second half initially it was amy clifford and then it was finished by ava o'gorman you will see it again i wonder was she going for a goal certainly went just under the bar the goalkeeper got to it but then it was smashed to the net Oh, we could have a game after all. Dixborough with a goal. It's back to 1-7 to 1-1. Game on. That's certainly livened things up. Mary Lacey, she's been overturned there. That was really good work by Kiva Dowling, number 12, and Aoife Prendergast, the captain. And Dixborough are now winning some of the battles around the field. Una Lacey coming out towards that one. But it's Dixborough. And they have won another one. It's Kira Phelan. Ball breaks and could go anywhere. It's fallen for Eilert and their cornerback O'Dowd. And she does well and there's room here for Curran. And it breaks for Curran again because it just... Um, Seems to be going their way with the momentum when they go forward. And it was Nolan who did well, actually. And now it is Dixborough going with the direct ball up the middle that works so well for Eilard in the first half. This is Asha McCarty over there and O'Gorman, the goal scorer. The crowd have found their voice. Six points in it, still a long way back, but seems a lot more manageable now for Dixborough if they can build up a little bit of momentum but Curran has it 
And she is looking for Kyo and Shelley Kyo read that beautifully. Three maroon jerseys around her, but she still found a pocket of space, showing great skill and scoring a magnificent point. What an answer to the goal. A brilliant score, beautifully picked out, beautifully taken and beautifully scored by the twin sister of the captain. 1-8 to 1-1. One, one. What a response from the champions. Maher puts it high into the sky. And when it drops, it's Dixborough who are there first. And it's Lucinda Gahan and she goes cross field. But that's going to come straight back down the throat of the Dixborough defence. They're being overrun again. Jacob gets in there again. Jane Cass doing really well, but she's under serious pressure, and Sinnott comes away with it. And it breaks kindly for Gallagher. She speeds off, and she gets it in now to Nolan. And she was taken out of it there, and the referee is calmly walking towards it. And what will he give here? Will it be... A free, it looks from here like it was just outside the parallelogram. He's going to talk to his umpire, certainly, and take his time over this one. But it was certainly a hefty hit, as you will see again. Bang. Five minutes into the second half. And Dixborough, you would have thought, might have built on that goal. But instead, it's Euler to have hit back and resumed their superiority. Referee speaking to the fullback for Dixborough, the number three. That's Kira O'Shea. Nolan is okay to continue. The referee has a conversation with Ursula Jacob, who is over the ball, or rather has the ball. Substitute being warmed up for Dixborough, their number 17, Orla Hanrick. They certainly will need changes now, as Ursula attempted to go low. Nope, no need. One nine to a point, eight points. And they've more or less canceled out the goal. Now it's Dixborough's turn, they need to respond, but that has gone towards a lot of red shirts. Kira Phelan trying to get the ball up, but it breaks, and it's the opposite number nine. It's Curran again. She's had a super game. And that one is well taken by the fullback, but she's blocked in there brilliantly. Good work again. And it was Katie Gallagher in that time winning it, but Dixborough get the decision in the end. trying to make that substitution and they are going to be allowed to make it now. Hanrick, number 17, coming in with the white helmet in place of Kiva Dowling, number 12. 17 for 12 for Dixborough. Maroon jersey, maroon helmet, the captain, Aoife Prendergast, the Kilkenny senior captain for 2012. 2021 rather of course and what a score from her from serious distance there only the third score of the game for her team but if they need a bit of inspiration there it is and Henrik has gone in to full forward so you would imagine Dixborough will try to get it into her as much as they possibly can but this is where the game is being won and lost. Those sort of exchanges, the individual battles. You've got to win the dirty ball, never mind getting it in. Now they have the chance to get it in because they won the dirty ball. And Hanrick is involved in there right away, but it's actually broken for Jenny Clifford. Jenny trying to find a little bit of room and a pocket of space develops for Kira Phelan, who gets in there and gets a shot away, but it's gone right and wide. The sun has gone. But has Dixborough's chance gone? Seven points in it, not insurmountable. But they need 
a lot more than they have had so far and it needs to be a little bit more consistent but they're quite loose there's room there for Kira Story and she dispatches the ball deep into enemy territory but that was much too easy for Eilard and there's a ball given away much too easily as well and this is Shelly Kyo and she wants to go on with it not for the first time they have been complaining about not getting advantage but they've certainly got the free and it's the Dix for a fullback again having awards or been spoken to by the referee and it's another free awarded for Eilard and I guess it's all come from serious pressure and Dixborough have really been clinging on for dear life on a lot of occasions and some of their tackling has been quite raw shall we say I'm welcoming your comments on the live chat on YouTube feel free to tell me what you are thinking 110 plays 1-2 And that's the 14 O'Gorman. She got the goal. She's trying to create something else. She's moved out from the edge of the square and gave it to Hanrick, and Hanrick did well. And there is another score, and that is from Jenny Clifford. Maybe Dixborough are not dead yet. One ten plays one three seven point game hit for Tad at the minute but if Dixborough could get another goal it could get very very interesting Kira Phelan the girl who's at DCU coming into the game a little bit more and there's another effort but it's going to go to the left and wide but it is a little bit more impressive from Dixborough in the last few minutes it's going to be a little bit of a hold up here for an injury and it's an Eilert player who is getting a little bit of treatment. I mentioned Kira Phelan there a moment ago. She's actually at DCU on a WGPA, that's a Women's GPA Scholarship. And her sister Neve at number six is the, or was the joint Kilkenny Minor captain last year. Then another sister, Emer, is in the subs. Wonder if she'll get a run today. And there's three Clifford sisters on the team. They started. So lots of sisters. There's actually Curran who needed a bit of treatment there for Eilert. This is good running by Tara Clifford, one of three sisters on the starting team. And she's driving at them and she's drawing freeze and it's been brought forward a little bit. I think there was maybe a little bit of back chat there. So it's going to be slightly easier for the number 13, Amy Clifford, than it first would have been. We're up to 700 watching on YouTube. The crowd online, as impressive as the crowd here and building all the time. And I imagine... It'll build a little bit more if Dixborough keep tagging on the scores. It's 110 to 14. Two scores in it. Mind you, they need to be two goals, but you know what I mean. Crowd sensing it as well. Getting more animated all the time. It's 110 to 14. Six points in it. But Eilert always have responded and they go off again. Now there's an injury there, and the referee says there was nothing amiss. He lets it go. And Gallagher, another intelligent ball into Nolan, but it doesn't stick. And in this half, things haven't been sticking just as much for Eilert as he did in the first half. And Dixborough clear their lines and get it up to Clifford. One of the Cliffords, that's Jenny. But O'Dowd is there for Eilert and gets it back to Brennan. But look at the pressure now. And this is much better from Dixborough. They're hunting in packs now and they're not giving Eilert a moment and they're doing to Eilert what Eilert did to them in the first half it almost worked for them but they have given away a free come on, come on. 
but they're certainly making a fight of it in the second half. And there's a player down way off camera to the right, and I wonder, is it Curran again, who was down a moment ago, and it is. She's getting up, but gingerly. She's been in the wars. And it is a bit of a war out there at the minute, a real battle, as you would expect. In the AAB hashtag, the toughest Leinster Senior Championship final. Coming up to water break time, just to remind you, the water break rule, doing away with the water break, doesn't come in and come again until Tuesday, so we will have a water break in a couple of minutes. Brilliant work there by Kate Dempsey, number two for Dixborough. They are on the charge now, their captain Prendergast to Phelan, a little bit too intricate though. And Euler come away with it, and it's Shelley Kyo who Sends it into the far corner, but nobody there for Eilert. So Neve Phelan gets a chance to clear, and they've really upped their game in the second half. And as I say that, they give it away. But Tara Clifford, or rather Ashi, Asha McCarty might get it. No, it's coming back. Curran recovering from a, a few knocks there. Gets it to Shelley Kyo. Off her left side and puts it Why? That's a let off for Dixborough. Still six down, but could have been worse. Sideline management for Dixborough. Very animated. They know that they need to really, really up their game even more. They're calling for more and more effort all of the time. They sense that this is their opportunity. If they can get another score here, they can really force things in the last quarter. They've been outplayed for long periods, but they're not out of the game. A lot of the decisions going for Dixborough at the minute. They're battling for it to win those. Kira Phelan. Oh, beautiful connection. Now there's a red shirt over there and she gets it. And that is Mary Lacey. And she took the bump in the back and gets her decision. Doesn't connect with it very well though. And Jenny Clifford is looking to pounce. She was a soaring star in 2016 and she's still playing well in 2022, but they're having to work very, very hard, Dixborough, and they are doing that. That was brilliant work by Asha McHardy to get back there, but they're having to work relentlessly just to get the ball up the pitch, and they are doing that. And Kira Phelan there did well and took a knock for her troubles. Eilert are playing with at least one sweeper back there. And it's working for them. And they clear their lines. They are defending their six-point lead. And Una Lacey getting in there cleverly just to win possession. Waiting for support. She gets the support. And now it is Shelley Kyo who's been really lively. She scored 1-3 in the All-Ireland Final in December. And she gets another point now to stretch the lead to seven points once again. Referee is called for the water break. And if you're watching and thinking, I thought they were done away with, well, they were for hurling and for men's football, but not in Camogie until Tuesday, which is the 1st of February. A reminder as we are in the water break before we go into the last quarter I welcome your comments on the YouTube page there there's a little thing that says live chat if you click that you can leave a message or a comment or I always ask in the last quarter for your contenders for player of the match just noticing by the way the number 14 here is coming over from Dixborough. She's getting a little bit of attention, I think, from a physio about her right elbow or maybe her right hand. And that is Ava O'Gorman who got the goal. She'll be fine to continue, I think, and her teammates are saying you'll be good. But she's certainly holding that arm as if there's a bit of pain there around the wrist area. 
but she and the rest of the girls are going to have to dig really, really deep. Listen to the crowd really into this game. They know their Camogie. They love their Camogie. It's Wexford against Kilkenny. It's Eulert against Dixborough. We're down to the last quarter. The champions have a big lead, seven points. Can Dixborough provide something very special in the last quarter to turn this round? Certainly, Arlert have not had it all their own way in the second half. They did in the first. Dixborough scored only one point in the first half and survived three or four assaults on their goal. But this one's broken kindly, and that's Asha McHardy. Oh, and the young girl who's still at school breaks away, and there's a goal chance here if she can leave it off. She does. Will it end up in the net? It does end up in the net. It's brilliant. Superbly worked. Amy Clifford was in there, and it's a substitute. Orla Hanrick has got a goal just after the water break. Dixborough are not dead yet. Look at their management on the sideline. They are delighted with this. There's a hold up because there's an injury. But it's back to 111 to 24. It really is game on. There's a substitution down in front of us. Number 17 is just going in. And that is for Eulart de Bala. And that is Shauna Sinnott. And she's wearing 17. And back in 2012, when Eulart won their first All Ireland senior, she was just 17. She replaces number 28, Leanne Nolan. <laughs> first change of the game for Eulart. She's wearing 28, but she started the game, Leanne Nolan. They may be forced into another one because a few of their players have taken a few knocks out there. It's been a tough, tough game. And this little break will kill the momentum a little bit for Dixborough, but they are gunning to go. The player down was Kira Story, but she's made of tough stuff. Still going strong. Her dad, Martin, was made of tough stuff, and so is she, and so are these Eulart girls, but what have they got on the last quarter? Dixborough are now asking the question. Decision goes to Mary Lacey. We're in the 50th minute. One eleven plays 2-4. And it's Story driving it down the centre. They have a chance here, Eulart. And they go for goal, and it's saved again. What a save once again by Kirsty Maher. She saved them in the first half. She saved them in the second half. She is keeping them in this game almost single-handedly. That looked like being the killer blow. Kirsty says no. <laughs> Magic from Maher. Eilert could still get a score. They haven't had many in the second half. Certainly not as many as the first half. And she didn't really connect there. Lost her balance a little bit there, Jacob. And Dixborough have cheered that as if it was a score for them. Four points in it. At least ten minutes left to go. Maher, the hero today so far, and certainly if they win this, they'll have to thank her. And this girl's come into it more. Asha McCarty played in a Leinster Schools final on Thursday. Comes to nothing in the end. Now nearly every one of these balls has been down the throat of the D. Dixborough defence. Sun is certainly gone and it looks a little bit misly out there. It could be a little bit of rain out on the pitch. It's hard to tell but certainly it's gone very dull here weather wise but it's very bright and exciting game wise. And it's been all down to the battling from Dixborough in the second half. Much more competitive. And that one's broken kindly for Tara Clifford. If she can get to it and get it up, she doesn't, so she boots it. 
Instead, Lucinda Gahan. And she looks for the sub. He got the goal. Goes beyond her. And Eilert survived there, but there was a sense of anticipation there from some of the crowd thinking they might get in for another goal. It's end-to-end -end stuff now, though. And this is Kyo, and she spots the substitute Sinnott trying to get in behind and tries to pop it into her, but it's defended by Jane Cass, the number seven. And Jane's still there. And eventually, they clear their lines with Tara Clifford getting the slither up the pitch. But Eilert aren't giving up, and that's a great strike by Q. Is it on target? It is, you know. Oh, the Twins have been magnificent today for Eilert, and they make it a five-point game. It's up for grabs. The red shirts go up for it, the sticks go up for it, but it's broken kindly for Jenny Clifford. But can't she get it? She does under serious pressure and pulls on it. Substitute Rannick. Again, Hanrick is there. She gets out in front. She was sent in there to do a job and she is doing it very well, but good covering for Eilert. Just not clinical enough in there when it came up on that occasion, but Dixborough might get another chance, but again the ball spills. Oh, that's brilliant work again by the captain, Stacey Q. And that's why there's a goal chance at the other end. The goalkeeper Maher does well. Clears her lines. That's well done by Gahan, the number 11. But it's good defending by Kitty Roach, number four for Eilert. Their defense has been magnificent. They've only conceded six times. And that story in there, but it's been one back. And is that McCarty again in there? Oh, and it looked like the forwards were looking the wrong way when the ball came in. So Mary Lacey got in there quickest, but it's still anybody's. And the referee is going to step in. He's going to intervene. Fifty-fifth minute now. There's a few votes in the YouTube live chat for player of the match for the goalkeeper. Understandably for Dixborough, but they're trying to get a chance at the other end. Have they got one? There could be a free. There is a free for Dixborough. So yes, Rosanna Doyle says Kirsty Maher player of the match, and Bob Furlong agrees. I wonder, do you agree? Feel free to leave your contender for player of the match in the live chat there on YouTube. Not over yet, of course, but she's been magnificent. Look at the Eilert girls there with the sticks at the red. It goes low again. Oh, I don't believe it. It's gone into the top corner of the net. That's the second time that they have done that. You expected a point. I don't know if she was going for goal. That'll be the question after the game, but it certainly ended up in the net, and we now have a dramatic finish because it's a third goal of the game for Dixborough. Incredible stuff here. The champions have always got an answer. They've always responded. But look at this for defending from Kira O'Shea for Dixborough. These girls are really, really up for it now. They've got a great break there from the goal. They've got it back. It's a two-point game. And oh, brilliant work again by the substitute, Hanrak, and she releases it. It's well defended by Eilert, though. Look promising for the Kilkenny girls, but it's being defended. 3-4 now, that's 13. Plays 1-12, that's 15. You have to commend Dixborough for the way they've applied themselves in the second half. They've had a couple of goals out of nothing, but they've knocked on the door all through the second half, and they've got a few breaks. Kira Story. Looking for Curran. Curran. Does well, but is outnumbered in the end. Referee is right there with the whistle at his mouth, but is letting the play go on. And in the end, it's a red shirt. It's Curran who comes out with it, and it's a free for Eilert. The 
management are sending instructions into the forwards. The ball is going into the forwards. Jacob is there, Lacey is there, but the Dixborough defenders are there as well. Now Lacey comes in with a strong challenge and the referee says that's okay. It looked like a strong challenge from the back and actually Una seems to have injured herself in that challenge. There's sticks flying everywhere. There's challenges flying everywhere. It's all happening here in Abbottstown in this AIB 2021 Leinster Senior Final. More to the point, Eilert are not scoring as freely or as easily as he did in the first half. It's not over yet. We have two or three minutes of normal time and I'm sure we'll have three or four minutes of added time as well. Dixborough, another goal would put them ahead. All right, who's going to win this exchange? It's so important now in the game, and it's Dixborough who win it, and it's the captain, Prendergast, who sends it in. The substitute has done so well in there as a target forward, and she has got the decision. In fact, it's gone to Jenny Clifford, but what a handful Henrik is in there. She had the ball first, and then Jenny Clifford, and between them, they've got a free, and surely this will make it a one-point game. Dara say... It's a goal chance because when they've had freeze in this area, maybe a little bit closer in, they've got goals out of them. When it looked impossible, this time definitely going for the point. It's a one point game with one minute left. Drama in Abbottstown. The crowd loving this they have really found their voice in the second half half of them willing Dixborough on for one last push to get over the line the other half wishing Eilert to hold on for dear life decision goes to Eilert four minutes is the decision on the watch four minutes play four minutes extra Four minutes for Eilert to hold on to their title or for Dixborough to deny them. The champions will use all of their experience. Brilliant connection. But it goes straight to Neve Phelan. Goes back down that side, exactly where it came from. It's Eilert who come again and it's Aoife Dunn. And Aoife sprints forward with the ball. The referee puts his whistle to his mouth, but it's not needed because Katie Gallagher is free and she's bursting through and she bursts certainly one or two players out of the way and the free has been given for her and Dixborough very unhappy with that decision. They felt that it was maybe charging or that the decision should have gone the other way, but a great burst from Gallagher and done before that. And the referee is taking a note as well. But more importantly, it's Eilert on the attack and they've got the ball at the right end of the pitch for them. And surely this will be a two-point lead and that could be crucial at this point because it means that Dixborough will need to go for goal because time is fast running out. But Ursula Jacob is not going fast. She will take her time. It's tense. It's exciting. It's dramatic. It's a two-point lead for Eilert. <laughs> Dexborough in a hurry. Maher, the goalkeeper, has been magical with her saves to keep her team in it. But it's no use if they don't get over the line. She drives it long and high. Oh, but it's taken brilliantly by Mary Lacey. What a servant she has been. Started playing for Wexford more than 20 years ago and she's still there in the last few minutes of the 2022 All-Ireland Final. Leinster Final, sorry, I'm getting carried away. Oh, there's a mistake there, you know, but Aideen Brennan has got it back, or has she? There's a chance we're in the last couple of minutes. Every challenge, every exchange matters. Shelley Kyo comes away with a tourist twin sister, Stacy. She drives forward brilliantly. And then Katie Gallagher 
sends it high into the sky, but she's giving it away. It's Dixborough it will come again, and that's Kira Phelan asking questions in the 62nd minute. We're in the last two minutes of the game. Players falling everywhere. Dixborough need a goal. They're battling for it. Eilert holding on for dear life. The referee lets the play go on. It's all bottled up. It's broken kindly for Shelley Kyo in there. She sends it to Kira Story. This is good from the champions. Louise sent it now. But it goes straight to a maroon jersey, straight to Katie Byrne. But she isn't able to get it. And Una Lacey is in there battling. She's surrounded. 63rd minute, only about 90 seconds left. The champions have a two point lead. The ball broken there though, it looked for all the world like Eulert were on the attack. They have got it again though. Every ball though goes straight to a maroon jersey in there and it's feeling. She sends it straight to a red jersey though, to Shelley Kyo. It's fast, it's frantic. McCarty. The teenager, the schoolgirl, the number 10, drives it forward. But it's Curran who's there. Ball goes over the end, over the side. We're in the 64th minute. It's last chance saloon for Dexborough. They need a goal. A point will be no use. They put it in there, but it's brilliantly taken. Once again, for the Eilert defence, they clear their lines. And it'll come back yet again. That's Kate Dempsey sending it in there, asking one last question. Oh, and it's the number two O'Dowd in there clearing her lines. 63 minutes, 45 seconds. Katie Byrne sends it in there. Oh, it's brilliantly taken by Jenny Clifford. They need a goal. It goes low. Oh, drama in the last seconds of the game. It's saved by Laura Sinnott. Surely that's it, it is it. Eilert celebrate again. They hung on right at the end. It went right down to the last few seconds. Oh, it's hashtag the toughest. It's also the most drama you will see on a camogie field. And it's Eilert who have held on to win the 2021 AIB Leinster Senior Championship Final. But what a dramatic finish. They can't believe it. They've done it again. Eulard have won again and Dixborough are defeated but what a brave, brave effort they put on today. An absolute thriller here. Dixborough can't believe it. They came so, so close but in the end it was all about that save in the last 10 seconds. Lauren Sinnott. What a save from her. Eulard on the march again possibly to another All-Ireland. I asked earlier for your contenders for player of the match. We will have that on the pitch shortly and the presentation of the cup as well. So we will welcome your suggestions for player of the match. We've had a few already for the goalkeeper from Dixborough, Kirsty Maher. And you can't argue with that, although after that dramatic finish, you have to credit the other goalkeeper, that's Lauren Sinnott. What a save from her. But what disappointment. The number four, Katie Byrne there, sits on the turf and she's been consoled by her goalkeeper, Kirsty Maher, and been pulled up. Brilliant effort from the girls today, but so disappointing for them in the end. We have a contender coming in Deirdre Codd says Shelley Kyo player of the match well if you're going to give it to the winning team you can't argue with that what a performance the captain put in from start to finish first half was incredibly impressive from Eulert second half they ended up holding on right at the death Dixborough came at them with everything got a couple of goals out of nothing and almost snatched it It's Eilert de Bala, champions again in Leinster. All-Ireland champions in 2012 for the first time and again in 2015 and again in December. And now they have a chance 
for a fourth. Players coming over now. Crowd not being allowed onto the pitch here at Abbottstown. The subs are going on, but the players now coming over for the presentation. And you see there some of the Dixborough players consoling one another. They are forlorn after losing this and coming so close with a brilliant brave effort in the second half the umbrellas are up because there is a bit of drizzle out there and now you see the cheer down to our left for Eilert de Bala from their supporters the red and black everywhere on the umbrella and on the pitch lots of congratulations and they deserve that too a really remarkable performance from Eilert, brilliant first half, lots of quality, and then lots of dogged determination to hold on in the second half, and they just about did that. Lots of little ones getting out onto the field there. And the presentation area is being prepared see Karen Atkinson there she was in the subs today former All-Ireland winning captain with Wexford so much experience so many medals and yet they still have the hunger to go looking for more we have the Camogie president Hilda Breslin in attendance at the presentation area and we have the Leinster president Linda Kenny from Carlo who is stepping forward now and we've a microphone there to pick up what she is saying so she's about to start her speech and she has the cup there so we'll be handing over to her and we are just waiting for some of the Dixborough players to come over to the presentation area and we'll stay on don't worry for the speech and for the cup presentation of course Abbottstown for what has been, we have to say, one of the most fantastic Leinster senior club finals in many years. So well done, <laughs> Albert and Dixborough. <laughs> I just want to say a few thank yous first. First of all, I want to say a huge thanks to the GA Centre here in Abbottstown, to Brian and Shane and all the staff. I can't think of the other Stuart's name, but I want to thank particularly Dublin Camogie personnel as well, who have been here today to steward the venue. We are very lucky in this January to have such a fantastic facility available to Leinster Camogie to play our senior championship final. So many thanks to Dublin Camogie personnel and the stewards and to the National GA Centre here in Abbottstown. I also like to welcome here today a Dixborough man who I've met for the first time, Jason Dempsey, who is representing our sponsors AIB. So on behalf of Leinster, I want to welcome Jason to the match and to say thanks to AIB for their fantastic sponsorship of the 2021 Club Championship. I want to compliment our referee, Gavin Dunnigan, and his officials, Ray Kelly, Jerry McGough, and Phil, and for all the work they've done over the last number of weekends to ensure that our games were played in the 2021 Championship. Also, many thanks to Jerome Quinn for the excellent streaming of both yesterday and today of our finals, and for all the work that he's done on the social media aspect of our championship finals. I would also like to record our thanks to the executive, and in particular the secretary, Brendan Cooper of Leinster, for the work. We've had a very, very busy two months playing the 2020 and the 21 club championship, and I know that both clubs will agree that Brendan has Work with you in a very professional and fair manner. So, Brendan, many thanks. Also, to the other executive members who were at other venues at semi finals this weekend, many thanks also. I don't know what to say after that game, girls. 
It was just absolutely breathtaking, fantastic. And you are just a credit to your clubs, your counties. And Leinster are very proud of that performance of both teams today. So, Dixborough, I know you are a very young team, one of the most progressive clubs that we know of, and we've had a lot of dealings with you. And we want to say to the Dixborough club, you've had an amalgamation with your Camogie and GEA club, which I think will bring Camogie further in your club. So, to Dixborough, commiserations, and you've been fantastic ambassadors for Dixborough. Since I became involved in Leinster five years ago, I've been involved or know all of you girls in Owlert from the Leinster League now to your second Leinster title in my reign as chairperson. You're fantastic ambassadors for Owlert, for Wexford and for Leinster and I want to compliment you on another fantastic day for your club and wish you every success in the All-Ireland Series. Without further ado, I'm going to ask Jason Dempsey from AIB in High Street in Kilkenny to present the Player of the Match award. And the Player of the Match from today's final is Shelley Kyo Owler Kabal. <laughs> here today and um, they're top notch and I suppose the ground is pretty hard for the time of year that we're playing in so thanks very much for letting us use the facilities and um, the referee, the young players and all the officials thanks very much as well and um, Dixborough thanks very much for an unbelievable game I suppose we fought in the bitter end and luckily we came out on top but we feel your pain you're a young team and keep going and I'm sure we'll meet you again and you'll be lifting the cup yourself so two cheers for Dixborough okay Brilliant speech, brilliant presentation, brilliant game. Thanks to Leinster Camogie for making it available free to watch. One last comment on our YouTube live chat from John Adams. Well done, Eilert Tabala. Did well to hold out. Shelley Kew, without a doubt, proud to be from Eilert Tabala. That sums it up. We hope you enjoyed the coverage on behalf of Leinster Camogie who, as I say, made it available to, I hope it has showcased the skills and the commitment out there from both clubs and from both counties. It's been an exhibition, it's been a fantastic game, as Linda Kenny, the chairperson, said, one of the best in years, an absolutely fantastic game, a thrilling finish. We are going to get in 
a few interviews now with a few of the players and we'll put them up on the social media as well and we're definitely going to replay a few of the saves in particular by Kirsty Maher and of course that one right at the end that saved the day and made sure that Eilert won another title and are still on course for back-to-back -back All-Irelands. From Abbottstown, from our live stream team, it's goodbye.